Hello, this is Bill Klodzy. Welcome to a video about my sealed adventure in the Limited Championship. As you can see right now, I'm 6-0 among the top six. My pool is pretty insane, so we ended up building a black-red deck with double Liliana's Mastery. Those are the two most powerful cards in the pool, and they certainly stack very well. So the Anthem that they leave behind helps all my other mummies, and there's several. Uh, one option was to build white black, which would have had slightly more synergy, but would give up on all this power we have in red. Including some discard for heaven, playing one painted bluffs in case we need to hit the flyers. We have an evolving wild, so if flyers are a big problem, we can side in one forest and so forth. Uh, Hazaret is another way to get reach. We have a trial, we have two cartouches. Really, this deck is a 10 out of 10. It has everything you need to win any game. It can deal with gods, with final reward, has multiple ways of dealing with Glorybringer. And let's try it out in another match, hoping to go 7-0 and here. There will be 10 rounds. This is Ekin, uh, the, uh, the person at the top of the trophies in the competitive leagues in draft. Oh, caught this on camera. Let's uh, mulligan this. It's the one of the first times I've had to mulligan in this uh, tournament, but, you know, whitelist Ekin over here. Uh, so we'll keep this, however, and we can put this land to the bottom. We just don't need it. I'll try to play kind of deliberately here, take enough time to make sure we don't make any mistakes. Because every little misclick here is going <laughs> to... It's going to add up. All right, so they're on white-black. So we can expect some zombie nonsense. But can't be as good as ours. If we can draw black here and they play a one-toughness creature, that'd be interesting. Splendid Agony. Fair enough. They want to keep the board clear. We're drawing our best spell. It's always good. And we can play out... Bone Picker here. That's a more aggressive play, and Soul Stinger is better on the field when they have attackers. Even if we're giving up some chance to have a one mana spell later on, we're still just constricted on black mana here. So this is going to be their own bird, which they may be happy to trade. I think we do not want to trade here. We don't want to give them the choice. We'd rather keep that for ourselves. Right, so this pool has everything it needs to be good, um, including some, some card selection. Uh, get rid of extra lands and so forth, which is what lets us play 17 lands in this deck. Hmm. Things get a little more interesting now. We could play Cartouche of Ambition and start getting in with more or less Baneslayer Angel. Um, yeah, I kind of like that here. This is one turn where they can't deal with it, so at the very least we get a bit of value. Gain four life, put a minus one, minus one counter on a thing. Ah, oh, they're gonna <laughs> return the favor. Our guy's still bigger though, so if they trade hits here, it's not great. Now, if they have Jeru's Resolve, that does get pretty strong. So before attacking, I'm gonna cycle this. Maybe we draw something good, and we do. Not as good as a Swamp. Jero's Resolve. If they had it, they might have exerted there, but to hide it, maybe they don't. All these mind games. So we're still kind of winning this race, but who knows what could happen here. That's a good one. It's not a bad play. Hmm. 
Well, I still like attacking with Bone Picker. They can do some pretty crazy shenanigans next turn by exerting the Tawcrop Elite. But our next play is pretty good against that. We're going to put a minus one, minus one counter on Soul Stinger. Unless they exile it, we'll get some value there. And at the very least, we have a 5-4. So we'll get our second black into play next turn. Almost as good of a play as a Regal Caracal alone. They... I bet they have Liliana or something ridiculous. Yeah, Angel of Sanctions. XL Soul Stinger. Or that. But if we get that back, it's a, a little a few more damage for us. They're just gonna come in and exert everything I, I expect. Which saves one of their cats. Otherwise the play could be block a cat, redirect the damage to the Curacol, or the uh, counters rather. So we're taking 10 here, and they gain like 4 million life. So that would be a cute play, It would, but we can't kill the cat anyway this turn, so I think we just block the Caracol, put the counters on it, kill it this turn. It's going to be a tough one. Well, if we knew we were going to draw that, could have done some things. I'm a little afraid that they have an answer, another answer to Bone Picker that would let them attack with the Angel. I, I guess it doesn't matter because we'd rather get a hit for three in. Regardless even if they couldn't deal with it. So here's our big bomb, our first big bomb versus uh, three of theirs, basically. The Never to Return, Regal Caracol, and Angel. All premium. We also have a trial we can dig up, so delaying our cartouche a bit for the trial helps us. I can't believe the life totals are so close. They gained so much. Blighted Bat, well... We have a good answer to Blighted Bat. Oh! Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Oh, my goodness. So this is the perfect answer to Angel of Sanctions, and, you know, having one of these in the pool just put it up to a 10, basically. Well, now what? I mean, what do we do? So we could attack with both our zombies. And that looks okay, but what's going to happen is they're going to attack back and exert. And then we can final reward in response. Hopefully they don't have a way to sacrifice it, but there's no hex proof there. They could they could kill it at instant speed. I don't see a way that they could deal with that. So we unlock our Manticore of the Gauntlet and go to blocks. Kill like a cat or something. Yeah. And then keep our Bone Picker back so it doesn't look as suspicious. And the reason I'm attacking with both of these is they can trade any two creatures. Well, they have to trade two creatures with one, so they could kill them both, but we'd deal with most of their board. Um, the other thing we could have done here is put Cartouche on something, and kill the bat, but this is much better. So they're going to take it, and uh, here's hoping. I mean, they could have the win this turn, or they could believe they have the win, but surely they do not. And they're going to keep the angel back. I, I like that. Yoink. Do this before blocks. And we'll just go ahead and put a counter 
on one of our zombies. We're still gaining a, a ton of life here. But... Oh, they didn't exert their Gust Walker. Still, I expect they have... Um, what's it called? 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Inno-catcher's name. I expect they have Inno-catcher's name. So if we block like this, we take 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. That's 16 total. And they don't kill our Manticore. I, don't, I guess we don't care about that so much. But we also don't want to lose our Bone Picker here. If they have two tricks, then, well, good for them. Okay, this worked out. Lifelink, lifelink still getting them some value. But now we can put Cartouche on our own Manticore, gain nine life when we attack. I hope this is pretty exciting. I didn't record the sealed build or, or the first six matches, but it is a pleasure to be up against Ekin, one of the masters of the format. Good lord. Rags to riches. Well, things did not work out quite as, uh, <laughs> as it would have been best for them to have worked out, but we can... God, they don't have the blue here. They do have never return. We could give them a zombie, and then they could double block our zombie. That might be better than just letting them block here. Less to deal with later. Gross. What a crazy attack. I mean, a good attack, but crazy. They've got one card left. We go up to 11. This thing still has a lifelink. Maybe we, yeah, maybe we take out the Talkrop Elite, make it a bit smaller. I mean, it does have lifelink. It's funny, these options are so close. They're so close. I think expecting to draw something here, and realistically the Talkrop Elite, you know, isn't going to untap every turn. So what do they do here? They exile Bone Picker or something from our graveyard, make a 2-2 zombie and hope to block. What did they get? They exiled the Manticore, fair enough. So we need to draw something. But we are kind of top decking here. Oh, that was good. And they did attack, which is also good for us. We get to our own attack in. Uh, let's see. Jero's Resolve. Let's be a bit greedy and, and see what they do. I don't want the Talkrop Elite exerting, actually. Yeah. I wanted to try to be a bit clever, but if they get the exert off, they still get that attack in. Festering Mummy, pretty good. So we're back on blocking mode, I think. Just shut them down until they find their double blue for riches. And they probably just aren't playing it for riches. That's not bad. Would have been better before our cartouches, but it's not bad. And we'll just save it. We'll just save it. We, we have a lot of late game. Um, that's pretty good. So 
So this does kind of deal with us. But let's um, don't have an answer to that. So let's just gain some life. Try to survive a bit longer. I don't know why it misses that trigger sometimes. Seven is the magic number because it gives Hazaret plus a discard. Oh, not like this. Come on. There's so many things we could draw to get out of this. That is one of them. That's a <laughs> that's a card that'll work out for us. Doesn't look like much now, but soon it will turn into a 3-3 zombie. Do they want to get this extra damage in? Uh, fair enough. I think we just block it, prevent some damage. I'm actually surprised they didn't just attack with both. Ooh, well, and that explains it, I guess. Even a discard outlet would help us uh, a lot here. Not that. So now we're priced into blocking the Soul Stinger. I guess that mulligan really cost us here. Tell you what. Now we need to look at our outs. Hazaret kills them, right? Five, six, seven. So Hazaret kills them. Electrify does not answer Soul Stinger. Emberhorn Minotaur. There's some things that kind of help us out here. Tormenting Voice. Um, let's see. If we trade with the zombie, we could draw Desert Ceridon. If we draw Miasmic Mummy, four or five, I guess we can Earth for five. Hazard wins either way. Ooh, really tough one. Scavenger blocks for another turn. Yeah, I think this gives us another turn if we just chump here. Meanwhile, they're drawing nothing, maybe? Okay, Hazard wins it here. Hazard has been such a boss. You're such a you're such a boss, Hazard. I think exactly what we need to play around. Because we need before we go to combat, we need um another card in our graveyard. So or or just yeah. I think we discard heaven to earth before going to combat. Keep our land in hand. Oh, did they have six? Damn, this deck has some real reach. They're at five. Oh my god, that was a perfect draw. I mean, they have a great deck, but every single card in our deck is just better than everyone else's cards. Uh, the pool was sick. The pool was good. And in these 10 round tournaments, you need to get lucky with your pool, at least somewhat. But you could easily have a pool like this and just scrub out, you know, go half and half. So you have to play very carefully to make sure you don't lose the, uh, the games that you should. But the selection, like Tormenting Voice, Battlefield, Scavenger, Harsh Mentor has actually been pretty good against like random Oracle's vaults and artifacts and things. And what else? Yeah, we don't have much other card selection, but we do have ways to get rid of cards like Hazard, like you saw, can discard Earth. We have um, the mummy to discard it, discard extra lands. It's got a lot of play to it. Now we need to be careful sideboarding because they have a powerful deck. <laughs> I mean, they have good cards. Uh, we could bring in Scarab Feast. That's one I've been doing for Desert Ceridon. 
or even Manticore of the Gauntlet, but that seems pretty good. It deals with part two of that angel they might have. Exile all spells and abilities on the stack, so if they... The funny thing is that this isn't just a counterspell, it's an exile for that spell. Uh, then you have to win the next turn, but it's worth considering that it's pretty good against Embalm if their last turn is a, an angel. I brought it in once and it was just a mulligan, so I don't recommend it, but I kind of thought, it, thought of it as a fog. Anyway, um, they do have some flyers. So I've been taking out a swamp for a forest, and where's our good art forest? We have two forests. One of them doesn't look at all like a forest. Here it is. And why am I doing that when I have double, you know, black for the Liliana's Mastery and a Scarab Feast? Mainly because, well, actually, never mind. I changed my mind. I have changed my mind. Uh, in this setup, we don't have our Ceridon to cycle, so I think it makes more sense to have an extra black. Okay, Ekin. God, we're down to 13 minutes. This is what happens when I think hard and talk. But we can keep this hand. And they're putting us on the play. Uh, I guess they figure this is going to be a, a real long one. I guess we cycle while we have the chance. Try to find yeah, find that first mastery. Because that can really drive home the the victory here. Make sure we get this in play. They are playing black, so if they discard two things and we want to discard land, then we can go for that. I played against one deck that had two harsh mentors. They're all set up for the fan bearer matchup. Okay, they're playing for the late game. Um, let's go ahead and get Painted Bluffs into play. Not a typical card you see, but I believe it's okay if you have uh, a splash for an aftermath part of a card, or in this case, the front end of it, but still the less common end of it. And you don't want to mess up your, your main mana too much, like you have double of both colors or something. It's been okay. I've cast Liliana's Mastery for six off it a couple times. Uh, do we do anything this turn? Well, no. We've played our land. Usually I've been ahead on the clock versus most opponents, but this is the first time I've really done this. Put another counter on it. Okay, well, we'll definitely play this. And then what? Then we could Cartouche and attack. We could play Manticore, ping them for three. Or we could just play the best card in our deck, Mastery. Get two foil zombies, pass it back. More than makes up for this Soul Stinger over there. Takrop Elite's pretty good. Festering Mummy, not bad. Here we go. Heaven. <laughs> And the fact that it's instant means we can do it right away. We need to do it for two, so it'll cost three. So we can't do Cartouche plus uh, Heaven this turn. We can play land. And I think we just attack with both zombies. Looks pretty good to me. There's not too much they can do here. So they kill one of our zombies, and they kill, I guess, Harsh Mentor. Not a bad trade for them. But we get in three damage and deal with this Soul Stinger. Okay, they don't want us to have a 3-3. Three, three. And fair enough, I guess. 
Let's play our nifty manticore. And let's put the counter on the manticore because that doesn't get taken down single-handedly by the mummy. And we don't want them to just be able to pick off the harsh mentor for free and having a zombie in play is fine. So they come in with the elite. That's their first three damage and they're exerting it, which is strange. <laughs> Ooh, rags to riches. I should have been thinking about that card. Oh, we're gonna, well, I guess we don't get them next turn, do we? Because they don't exert this thing. But when they do exert it, we'll be all set. Play a big angel. No, a soul stinger. Do we wait? I think we wait one turn, heaven to earth. Okay, this thing. Hmm. <laughs> to Yeah, it's kind of silly, but I think I like just playing the zombie here. If we get to untap with it, the cartouche gets a lot better. Compulsory rest. Well, that's okay. Let's see what they're doing here. This is the turn we run out heaven to earth, I think. So they exert that guy, which is a bit of a shame for me because I could have heaven beforehand. But we can do it in response. So it kills the Takrop thing. We take two more damage. So we take six to nine. They might have a pump spell here, supernatural stamina. Wow, that's pretty good. That's pretty good for them. Fortunately, we can kill off the Soul Stinger and whatnot. Oh, another cartouche. Cancel. Let's see, do we play our mountain? One, two. Because we want to do this for at least three. And we'll have two open. What if they have another pump spell? Hmm. What could it be? Mighty Leap? I... Uh, yeah. Currently two. Let's make it three. More mistakes here. Not uh, sacrificing the thing. Be at 11. But as soon as we get it, like... Even with that misplay here, we're still in not terrible shape, right? Because here we go. Sure shot, cartouche. Get another mountain in play. So we're sort of back to even, but our board is way better. Unless they have another answer to this. Sacred Cat is not an answer. I wonder why they left both to block. Well, let's find out. We're going to gain 5 million life here. I guess not 5 million, but 4. Hope we win this game because we're kind of low on time. I might have to shut up for the third game. Let's see if they get that angel. That's the big thing we have to play around now. All right, well. Minotaur sure shot. Yeah, we're gonna gain so much life. 
we have to keep up five mana here, which is why we played an extra land. We don't have to, but we can afford to. You know, gaining, th gaining two more life there doesn't help us as much as killing a potential angel. And I actually played Ekin once before. I was like, do you really need one more trophy? And he replied, I need all of the trophies. And he has them. <laughs> he has most of them. And I lost. <laughs> so, so this will be my redemption in Sealed. If I win, which is by no means a guarantee, but it's looking good. My hand is great. Um, even if they were to play Unburden here, we could exile something, you know. That'd be pretty good. It's really good that we're not playing against riches, but Rags is good enough in a deck against most aggressive stuff. They figure they win the late game. What are they going to exert here? No, they'll just attack normally. And they want the Sacred Cat alive to gain that life, which is fair. Regal Caracal. Is that one we exile? I don't think we exile it yet. Surely they, they can't block with enough here. But I'm not gonna risk it. We'll just let them let them come. Because they, they could actually block four. So unless we wanted to use our other cartouche to make it bigger, we can't really punch through there. So this gets pretty awkward, I'll say that much. Thank thankfully we have the lifelink on our Minotaur. Soul Stinger's not bad. Let's put the counters on itself and once again hold up the uh, final reward. And it probably looks like we have final reward because we kept up five mana there and they're not one to, to miss that fact. Just start doing random things here. The top crop elite can get that exert trigger in, so I, I want that to be gone. And now we attack with the soul stinger, gain some life. And pass it. They're just drawing towards that angel, we know they have. Keep doing it. Did they take it again? Sure. They say sure. Okay, the uh, swamp doesn't give us another pump, so there's no real reason to use it there. Yeah, it's coming so low on time. We really need to win this game. We do want to win this game. But, I mean, our deck has a lot of good cards in it. We'll keep this swamp so we can discard it to something. 12, we've got five lands left in the deck. So we, we actually don't have many lands to go. Most of our cards are gonna be action. They say this turn or not this turn? They say not this turn. Uh, I will even attack with the Cursed Minotaur here. It's getting to the point where they have to block. This is not gonna work so well for them. 
the order doesn't matter here. Because we get to keep our soul stinger. Um, they still kill our Minotaur, but they actually lose all of their stuff. So what do we do if they play the Angel? Well, we have stuff left over. That's the answer there. If they play Dawn to Dusk, I guess we're in, in pretty bad shape. So they might have been waiting for us to lose it, but their creature loses to both of ours, especially if they block. Five, six, seven, eight. Um, I guess we just regular attack with both. And they block the Emberhorn Minotaur, sure. So Magma Spray means when it dies, it does get exiled. And we get our Sure Shot back. And they concede. Wow. We got there. So we beat one of the best <laughs> limited players in Amonkhet with um, five minutes left. That's how much I love you guys. Anyway, that means we are 7-0. and And likely, if we win the next one, we can make top eight. I ran the numbers, and it looks like there will be between one and zero undefeated players at the end of this. 10-0, 10, 10 rounds. And between, well, and there'll be exactly three people, uh, regardless of whether there's an undefeated or not. There'll be exactly three people, X and one. So four or five people at X and two will make it in, likely those people who are undefeated at eight and O. Uh, and our deck is definitely posed to do it. So hopefully I'll see you for a top eight draft. Those are always fun.